<clears throat> Hi everybody, uh, Mr. Dorfee here. We are here for another live art for kids and adults too. Um, I am super excited for today. Um, we have a um, project drawing that um, is going to center around an artist named Roy Lichtenstein. Um, very cool American artist, comic book artist, um, very recognizable images. Hello, Devendorfs. Um, but uh, really cool artist. Um, and again, I've been posting the video um, the day before, or um, not the video, but the artist the day before with the post um, with the supplies that you may need, as well as um, I've been putting some um, videos and other resources, some images. Um, so feel free to hop over to that post. Um, and look at the different resources I have for Roy Lichtenstein. Um, you probably, without knowing it, have seen Roy Lichtenstein's artwork um, and or have um, inadvertently um, seen something that has been influenced by him. Um, he is uh, also another pop artist, if you can't tell, it's a favorite of mine. Um, pop art, the movement, um, but some fun things about Roy Lichtenstein before we get started. Um, he actually started as a cubist artist, um, and if you've been watching these videos, um, we've been, um, we've learned about a couple different artists, one of them which is Picasso, um, who also was a cubist artist. Um, so Roy Lichtenstein started in those kind of wacky, um, different angles, you know, things not where they're supposed to be. Um, hi, Mason. Um, so he started as a Cubist artist. Um, and one fun thing that I like to tell, especially my students when I'm in the classroom, is that a lot of these artists, um, if not only when they started, um, but when they were, you know, creating art, might not have always been the most popular or um, liked. Um, their artwork might not have been deemed or um, been, you know, the thing to, to, to look at while they were creating. Like I think of initially like artists like Vincent Van Gogh. He sold one painting when he was alive. Um, and Roy Lichtenstein was one of those artists. When he first started painting, all the art critics were like, Mm, no, you're you're copying people. You're not you're not doing your own thing. Um, and uh, you know, he eventually he persevered. He kept going, um, and he is now one of the most famous artists, uh, American artists too, um, of our lifetime. Um, and he's sold paintings. Um, one of his early earliest, you know, one of the paintings that was seen as not as um, acceptable or liked by the art world uh, ended up selling for something like $50 million. So um, I like to tell kids that because, you know, you might have some people that, you know, some other friends in your class or um, whatever, and they might say, eh, you know, I don't like that. Um, but if you keep you keep on keeping on, um, you might end up being a famous artist or, you know, you just keep going on with whatever you're doing and do it for you, not for anybody else. Um, I need to get a cardigan so I can have those Mr. Rogers moments. Um, but today, uh, we're going to be creating Roy Lichtenstein pop culture portraits. Um, I have some different steps I wanted to show. Um, but then I also want to just kind of briefly go over some of the terms and things that we're going to be talking about. We've been talking a lot about line. Um, line is basically a mark that has direction. Um, so we're going to be focusing more on some of the thick lines. 
Um, if you got a chance to look at some of Roy Lichtenstein's um, artworks, he has a nice bold black line um, in a lot of his paintings. Um, another big component of, and I'm going to put them up together, um, pattern and repetition. Um, pattern is something that repeats over and over again. Um, and repetition is, you know, repeating something. Um, he repeats a lot of patterns. Um, and specifically, he uses two kinds of patterns. He uses dots and stripes. Um, let me get a quick, I see a lot of shout outs. Hi, Katie. Hi, Makai. Um, hi, Paul. Um, but lots of different dots and stripes. And, you know, the, the dots... There's a fancy name. He, uh, when you have a printer, he actually zoomed in. Um, printers actually just print little tiny dots. Um, and he was like, what if we, you know, a, a comic book, he was considered a comic book artist. And um, he was like, what if I print and create a piece of art like it's printed? So if you look closely at his paintings, they all have a bunch of little dots, which is basically like a zoomed in. Um, printed image which is dots and those dots are called bende dots um, all right so enough of me talking let's get making some art um, so when we got our paper um, we're gonna start with a portrait um, and I put on the um, post to have um, a mirror. Um, our end goal is going to be something like this. Um, and I'm going to show you how we get there. Um, if you want to draw it freehand, you can draw it freehand. Um, if you want to use a mirror and draw it, you can do that. Um, and Keep trying to get the light good for everybody in here. Um, another easy way, take your tablet. Um, if you have a picture of yourself, if you don't, you can take one. But you can blow up a picture of yourself and then you can put it underneath a piece of paper and you can trace it. Um, so I'm going to do both so you can see, and we're just tracing the basic outlines. Um, so I'm going to start mine. And you can see just tracing right on top of that tablet. And the glare is still rather bright, so I love my studio. I, I shoot this video from my art studio, um, and the lighting is wonderful, but it's not the best for um, my lives. So I'm just tracing the outside of the shapes. So if it's my glasses, my nose, and I made a little mistake on the face, but that's okay. Whatever, um, method works for you I wanted to give everybody options so if we if you have a mirror or you have a tablet or you want to just draw a normal portrait you know whatever and I'm using my Kindle so it keeps wanting to move things I'm reading um, whatever works for you guys 
whatever you have. Um, one big thing I'm trying to do is with these lives is make sure I know a lot of people maybe don't have the art supplies that I might have in my studio. Um, so I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to do something. So here I have my one I just drew on my tablet. Um, And then I have the one I pre-drew. Um, you guys might recognize this, recognize this from my, what is that? Help oh, with, that's too bright now. All right, so <clears throat> you should end up with a portrait on your paper. Um, I drew a circle in the background um, just because if you look at a lot of Roy Lichtenstein's artwork, um, a lot of his um, artwork has very um, geometric shapes. Um, and again, geometric, that's a term we learned in one of our past videos. Let me try to find my... A geometric shape is a shape that has a name. So I always say those are our math shapes. So circle, triangle, rectangle, trapezoid, um, whatever those may be. So I did a little circle in the background. Um, I think you guys can still see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I have my um, portrait done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black marker and I'm going to very carefully trace over all of my pencil lines. And I've said this before and I'll say it again, I tell my students this all the time, if you do a good job on this step, it will be easier for you to do the next steps. So I'm gonna do this a little bit backwards so that everybody can see. So I'm just tracing over all of my pencil lines that I made with a nice thick black line. And in my hair, I'm trying to get some of that texture of my beard which I've seen a couple of, of my friends who are stylists. No one has ever, that are on this live right now, no one has ever appreciated. I always appreciate my stylist, but we never appreciated you more when we can't get our hair cut or our beard trimmed. Um, but I'm taking my time. I'm going over all of my pencil lines. with a thick black line. And this thick black line is going to give it that comic book look that is very Lichtenstein. Um, one of his most famous paintings, um, painting called Wham, Um, is a picture of a plane in like a like a war plane and it's shooting and it's got this big um, wham kind of word in it and uh, one of his most famous paintings but it's all about those thick black lines that we think of comic books um, black outlines the black outline shapes with the bright bold colors um, and we've learned in our other videos about some of our primary colors and our secondary colors um, and today I'm going to choose one set of those 
because one thing that Lichtenstein's work is also it's it's very uh, simple um, there's not a lot of you know variety in color or um, he's just very focused on the things like the dots and the patterns and the lines and making those really crisp and consistent and consistent means all the same uh, as we do some outlining Makai I'm doing wonderful how are you doing and hi Jared from Newark New Jersey Good morning, Faith. Hello, Faith, another one of my students watching. Our school has been rolling out a remote learning program. Um, and I attached um, Mr. Dorothy's art stuff to, to those emails because I'm hoping to get more and more. I already have a lot of my students that are on here. I have Mackay, I have Mason, I have Faith, um, Braxton's been on here, Angel should be on here, um, lots of lots of my students, and then also other students, like I have some students, uh, Jared's from Newark, New Jersey, from um, another uncommon school in Newark, New Jersey, and I've been super grateful that uh, I've been... If you don't follow me on Instagram, um, Mr. Dorfy's Art Room, that's a Mr. Dorfy, D-O-R-O-F-Y, um, and then an S on the end, Mr. Dorfy's Art Room ES3, I teach at elementary school three for Manchester Prep. Um, but Mr. Dorfy's Art Room ES3, um, I've been posting all of these and then also pictures, um, and Uncommon Schools has been sharing the live um, information to get more people and uh, like I have some people from Newark, New Jersey in here so that's lovely I'm so glad you guys are here um, so here is now my portrait outlined ready to go um, I'm going to start in the background um, the background here's the foreground Middle ground, background, what's behind it? So, the background in my picture is going to be the circle. Um, the important part for the background, um, and you don't have to have a circle, maybe you just do the paper behind you. Um, so, I'm gonna show you just very quickly on my face here, the extra face that I made. You know, my background doesn't have to be in a circle, but we're going to do some stripes. But we want the stripes to go behind our face. Um, and I'll show you what that means. So it means that we have our face, but our lines are going to skip between where our face is. Um, we want to be able to add more details in the face, but we're going to do some lines. And I want you guys to think about what colors you're going to use. Um, obviously, if you want to do a bunch of wild colors, that's fine. But I'm going to stick to primary or secondary colors. And again, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, those are colors that can't be made. If you look at Roy Lichtenstein's artwork, um, a lot of his colors are in the red, yellow, and blue um, because those are a lot of the colors that are um, in comic books. Um, and a fun little fact, he actually got into comic book art because of his son. Um, his son was looking at some Mickey Mouse cartoons and said, Dad, I bet I, you can draw better than that. Um, and that got him into the comic book art. Um, but I'm going to focus on my secondary colors. So, so the secondary colors are when you mix two primaries. So that's going to be green, violet, and orange. 
Um, so I'm gonna do on my black outline, I'm gonna do my circle. I'm gonna do some shapes, or some stripes rather, stripes, 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 um, in the background. And I'm gonna skip over my face. So I'm just going to just do my, and if you want to use some sort of straight edge, you can. I've gotten over the years blessed with a steadier hand, so. And a straight edge doesn't have to be a ruler. It can be used a, I'll use it just so you guys can see. It can be a piece of, I'm trying to do this so everyone can see. It can be a piece of scrap paper. Um, and again, making sure that we're jumping over our face so that we're not coloring our lines through our face. You wanna make sure that we can leave our face to be able to color in. We're gonna do it like this so you guys can see me doing it. And so, you know, a little known fact about Wellington's son, like I said, was the fact that his son was um, his inspiration for getting started with comic book art, and it became what he is known for. And I just love the fact that, you know, his being a parent and having a child and letting the kid um, have some, you know, participation in the art that's why I do what I do um, so powerful having kids have the ability to create um, a lot of my art some of the ideas start with ideas that kids come up with I know some of my students that are watching can tell you that my drawing challenges that I have you know that I get a word and you know sometimes Kids have the best ideas. So I'll say, hey kids, what do you think of when you hear the word whatever? And then some of their ideas are what I end up going with because they're so amazing. Um, so there's my background. I'm gonna stick with secondary colors. So secondary colors again are red, orange, and violet, or purple, whatever, however you say it. Um, and if you're using, I'm using markers, obviously. Um, I put on the thing, or on the post, if you had thick, like Crayola or whatever brand you have, markers, like thick markers, those would be best. Um, but if you have crayons or colored pencils, you of course can do this stuff. Um, it just might take an extra second to um, get nice and thick or dark. Um, with crayons and colored pencils, you might just have to apply a little more pressure to make sure that you can get the dark lines that you desire. Um, now, we have all of these different pieces and parts of my face that I can start to color in. Um, and I'm going to get a couple different oranges and violets and greens to be able to color in my face. Um, and I'm just gonna get going with, you know, um, color and pattern. Um, some of the areas that I have, I might just color in solid color. Like I'm thinking immediately I'm gonna color in my glasses, and I'm gonna color them in purple or violet. 
Not all of Roy Lichtenstein's pictures and paintings all had, you know, it wasn't all polka dots and, and uh, stripes. Some of there was just solid color. So don't be afraid to add some solid color to our picture. Um, and then you can also, I'm gonna do my skin now with my, one of my favorite markers called Apricot. And I'm just gonna do dots. And when I'm making my dots, um, it's almost like I'm making a little circle. I don't wanna just do tiny little dot. I wanna take it and make a tiny little circle. And so this might take some time, but it'll actually take less time to make these bigger, larger circles than it will to actually go through and make tons of tiny little dots. And those bigger circles um, that we're using will actually um, fill up the space more. So I'm just gonna start adding these circles to my skin. And I'm gonna kind of alternate them And if I bump into something, I don't want to cover up my, so some of my areas, some of my dots are going to cover up my eyebrow. I'm just going around them. Just going around them. And I'm just going to keep on going. Keep adding my dots. And on areas that, you know, it's a little bit trickier because of my glasses, just do your best. I still want to go inside anywhere that my skin is. So that in includes also my ears. You know, it's basically the same concept of if I was coloring my skin versus instead of coloring, I'm just putting a bunch of big circles. As we're working um, if you haven't already if you want to go back and watch a live you might have missed you can go to my YouTube channel I've been putting all of these lives on my not on my YouTube channel like I've had a YouTube channel no I created a YouTube channel because I heard from some people that you know I missed one how can I go see it um, I put them on my YouTube channel it's just my name Jason Dorfee um, and the lives are up there um, so you can follow along if you missed one I've also been putting some of my personal artwork on there I do time-lapse videos um, so if you you know I've had some friends that love the time-lapse stuff on face or on YouTube so I've been putting those up just for watching to help pass the time um, so you can hop over there um, and if you have any ideas or things that you um, want to see feel free to put them in the comments um, so here is my uh, orange dots um, so I have these orange dots uh, ah, perfect. Someone's following my YouTube channel. I have a whole bunch of subscribers, all 62. Um, 
But no, I, I love that I have people following and, you know, being able to, in this, in this crazy time, to be able to make some art. Because art for me is, is a time to, um, one of my favorite, favorite quotes um, is by an artist and he says, Art is not what we see, but what we make others see. Um, and that's for me, if you look at any of my um, personal art and in my, my teaching, I like to make sure that uh, humor and fun and, and joy is, is brought in. So um, a lot of my art has a little bit of humor in it. Um, so, all right. So now that I have my um, face done, now I can start to add other um, elements. So I already have orange, I already have green, and I already have purple, but I'm just gonna add different shades of that. So what a different shade is, is gonna be basically a different lightness or darkness of a color. So I'm gonna find a different And here's all of my 8,000 markers. I'm going to pull out a couple different greens. I'm going to pull out a couple different purples or violets. And I'll pull out a couple different oranges. All right. So the other thing that we can do is as we are um, using the color and the shape of pattern, um, we can combine those things too. So for the hair, I'm going to show you something that we can do. Um, we can, using a light color first, and I'm going to find a light violet, I'm going to color my hair solid. And again, anything you would normally color. So my hair, oh, I just realized, well, my hair is no longer really violet, it's more gray. Um, this isolation has kept me from my barbarous. Um, but I'm gonna color my hair and my beard all in with solid color. And I just realized when I'm done, I'm gonna fix something. I forgot to do part of my, my skin. But that's the okay thing is it's not a mistake because I'm not done yet. I can go back and add it. So I have my, now my hair done. And I'm gonna go back in with my apricot. And I forgot to do in here. Now, so I have my hair done. Now I can go on top, because I did it in a lighter color, I can now go on top and add it, add some of my circles or my stripes with a darker color. So I can do a dark green. I'm just gonna choose a dark, a dark purple again. And I'm just gonna start with more dots. And because I'm going on top with a darker color, it adds some variety because I, now I have the white background with the orange dots, but I have a light purple and a darker purple. And 
again, I'm just taking my time. All we got is time. And I'm making big circles, which I'm calling dots, but I'm not just dabbing the marker. I'm making, I'm taking the time to make circles. It's filling in my space that much more. And I'm going to do it to my beard, too. I'm going to add that pattern, that repeating thing. Again, a pattern is something, and our school has a way of repeats over and over and over again. Um, so our, our pattern is repeating. these circles, these little dots. Again, they're called bende dots. Oh, and I forgot, almost forgot my eyebrows. Anything that has that color or would normally be that color, I'm gonna do with a pattern. So there is my hair now done. So I have my face, my hair and my background. Now I'm going to do my shirt. Or maybe I'll do my eyes. I'll do my eyes next because those are easy. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna do just some green. And I'll actually do my earrings green too. And I'll do the middle part of my eye, a darker green, so it's got a little bit of variety. Maybe I'll do my other jewelry all in green. So I've got my eyes, my skin, my hair. Now it's time to do my shirt. And my shirt, I'm thinking, what do I want to do it with? I'm gonna do it in another green. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it in a violet and we're gonna add another color on top. So I'm gonna use another light violet. dark violet. I'll do stripes for this. Let's do stripes. So I'm actually leaving the white as a stripe. So I'm, what I'm leaving behind is actually becoming the stripe. And I left my bow tie because I gotta have a patterned bow tie. So I'm gonna add some green to my bow tie. And I'll add some dark orange to my green bow tie. And since I'm wearing a plaid bow tie, we're gonna use plaid. We'll use a dark orange I'll use the thin side and 
and I actually don't like that. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the thick side so I can see them a little better. As I'm talking about Lichtenstein's art being bold, I'm doing thin lines. What am I thinking? So, now I have my portrait. And I can do little things like if I have a thin marker, I can take my thin marker and go around some of my dots. Um, like I actually have a, a green pen. I can go around and outline my circles to help make them stand out a little bit more. They're going to look a little bit more crisp. With a darker outline, they'll show up a little bit more. Again, this is all stuff that you don't necessarily have to do, but since we have a little bit of time, it's a nice little thing to add. And you can see how the ones that I've done it to kind of stand out a little bit more than the ones that have it. So, I'm just gonna outline, outline. So the next live is going to be on Wednesday. I've been doing these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, if you're looking for some other art in the meantime, like I said, I was, I've been posting the... I do other drawings, my personal drawings, and I do time-lapse videos for those. So if you want to pop on the YouTube channel and find those, you can. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Jason Dorfee or at Dorfee Inc. Um, to find those. Or my YouTube channel at Jason Dorfee. Just taking my time, going around, and we're almost done with these. And I actually think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the ones in my hair, um, <clears throat> but I'm just gonna hit the background lines a little bit just to make them stand out a little bit. And again, you don't have to do these steps if you want to do them with your thick black marker. Um, it'll make them stand out that much more. Make them look super Lichtenstein. And again, if you have those resources, um, go to my post on my Facebook page where I announce the supplies and the artists that we're learning about. Um, and there's a couple videos, um, and the videos are all rather short. They're, you know, less than, I think this, the ones today are less than five minutes. There's some other pictures of Roy Lichtenstein's artwork. So if you use those before, if you use them after, um, Roy Lichtenstein, there's got to be resources for him on things like the uh, MoMA website, MOMA.org, um, Museum of Modern Art. So, there's my um, portrait. So, just make sure, I'm going to make sure I sign it. Always want to sign your artwork. And then 
you have a pop art Roy Lichtenstein portrait. And I'm just neurotic, so I'm going to keep going with some of these outlining of lines. But here I have my pop art portrait. So make sure in the comments, um, please, please, please post. Um, there we go. Uh, here's my pop art portrait. Um, please in the comments, share your students' artwork, share your artwork. Um, make sure you go to my Instagram, at Mr. Dorothy's Art Room, ES3. Um, my YouTube channel, at Mr. or no, at Jason Dorothy for my YouTube channel. Oh, I'm showing off that I'm wearing shorts underneath. Um, <laughs> it's all an illusion. Um, but go to my YouTube channel, at Jason Dorothy. You can find all of these videos, plus other videos. Um, Mr. Dorothy's Art Room on on. Uh, Instagram or my personal Instagrams at Jason Dorfee or at Dorfee Inc. is my sole art page at Dorfee Inc. So you can see some of my time lapse videos on the days that I don't do these art for kids or and adults too lives. Um, but yeah, next live will be on Wednesday. Look for tomorrow for a post about what artists we're going to be learning about as well as what. Um, supplies we might need. Um, I'll be brainstorming and planning my lesson for um, Wednesday tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, stay well, and uh, make sure you're posting in the comments or send them to me or however you get them to me. I want to see your artwork, so please comment, 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 and show your art. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you later. See you Wednesday.